Brian Luizzi, Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce, all the board members of the Chamber, Bruno Didier and Cheryl Rennick, our feature speaker, Michelle Palmer, members of the Republic Bank Executive Leadership Team, all the members of the Chamber, or the invited guests, members of the media, good afternoon. It's my pleasure, well, I'm Gordon Julian, as was indicated previously, the country manager of Republic Bank, and it's my pleasure this afternoon to introduce our feature speaker, Michelle Palmer. And she's here to speak on the Republic Bank story. And who better to speak about Republic Bank than the one person in this room who has more blue blood running through the veins than Michelle Palmer, a 37-year career Republic banker who is very passionate about the Republic Bank story, and you'll hear that for yourself this afternoon. Republic Bank has been around for 182 years, having its origins in Trinidad and Tobago, inheriting the operations of uh, the old Barclays Bank. And from there, that launching pad, Republic Bank now operates in countries such as Barbados, Grenada, Guyana, Cayman Islands, Suriname, Grenada, and Guyana, if I didn't mention it before. Now, in addition to that, we also have the RBEC, that's Republic Bank EC Limited, which took over the assets of um, the predecessor, Scotia Bank, and Republic Bank Arbeck operates or is represented in Anguilla, Dominica, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, and St. Martin. So, with no further ado, I will now call on. It's my pleasure to introduce or to have Michelle Palmer tell you about the Republic Bank story. Michelle Palmer. Thank you, Gordon. So, Gordon has sold out my age, right? Because if I'm with the bank 37 years, I must be 39, because I joined the bank at two. Clearly. Thank you, Gordon. Good afternoon, and I'm very, very happy to be here. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Brian and the Chamber, for the introduction and the, also for the invite. You know, um, stars sometimes align and align very well. We were in the EC for two months, and we kept very quiet. Why did we keep quiet? Because we wanted to ensure that we were settled. Didn't make sense to us to be tooting our horn, speaking, shouting from the top of the rooftops, and, you know, we were still in transition. But come the 1st of January, when we started the new year, we said, we good, we ready, let's get out there. And that's when, but I should say, between November and December, we didn't sleep, eh? We booked some good deals and stuff during those two months. So, it, you know, it was, it was good Republic business happening in the first two months. But coming out and meeting um, our stakeholders and so, we focused on our customers. But January, we said, now is the time. And Brian called me and I said, Brian, you're in my brain. Because I had on my list this week to reach out to the chamber for us to begin talking about how can we get more involved and introduce ourselves to the St. Lucian market, to the, similarly to what we have been doing across the EC. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank you, Brian. Good afternoon all again. Thank you very much for your warm welcome. You know, um, we've been here, as, as, as I've said, for three months. And before coming, you, we would have, me, Michelle, and some of my other Trinidadian colleagues, we heard a lot about the beauty of St. Lucia, about the warmness of the people and so. But you know, to have, to have experienced it, I feel blessed to have that experience every day, to live in a beautiful place like St. Lucia and to have warm friends around me who are Lucians. Now, I haven't, and I haven't been working from the beach 
I've been, I was boasting to my colleagues in Trinidad, look at you, you in traffic for 10 hours, uh, well, it's traffic at eight hours in St. Lucia, but that's two less, um, and I'm gonna be at the beach. I haven't been working at the beach, but I do appreciate being able to call St. Lucia my home, and I do appreciate St. Lucia being the head office of Republic Bank EC. But before I go any further, let me introduce the Republic team here today. This is a team that keeps me on my toes. They ensure that we make decisions that are in the interest, the best interest of our customers and our communities. And I'll just ask them, you know, that person just to stand and when I call your name. I'll start with Fidela, General Manager, Corporate Services. <laughs> Fidela is a petition with many, many years. She is also 29. Uh, many, many years working in the region. Her experience span compliance, regulatory and regulatory roles re region-wide. Fidela takes care of the back of the Arbeck house. She ensures that we are up, we are ready to serve our customers, and that we keep our license. She, she's good at what she does, and it leaves me with a lot more time to focus on all the ideas coming from this next team member, Sean Moses, General Manager, Business and Retail Banking. He's the man with responsibility for the front of the house region-wide. He's an accomplished business development relationship manager. Late last month, I was in Trinidad for the group's sales and service award function. And I was sitting in the audience, and let me tell you, Mr. Moses captured, and when I say all, he captured all the awards across the group for business development and relationship management. So I am personally happy to have him on my team. He doesn't believe in one at a time. He doesn't believe in one at a time. So he keeps me busy. There's plenty balls in the air all at the same time. So keep your eyes open. Janelle Bernard, our General Manager, Legal Services and General Counsel. She keeps us honest. With her wealth of experience managing our governance and all legal matters, including regulatory compliance. You've already met Gordon and Gordon Julian. I like to describe him as that man that the Calypsonian Stalin sang about, the Caribbean man. He's a true Caribbean man. He's Dominican, yeah, he's from Dominica, but he has worked in many of our territories and I'll speak a little bit about that later on. He's responsible for the daily operations and growth of our St. Lucia branches. And sitting next to, to, to Gordon is Bruno. And Bruno trying to run competition with Sean. <laughs> he wants to go to Trinidad next year and take all the prizes that there is to have. All, all, all. I'm already seeing that in him and enjoying it. Um, he is our business banking lead. And he is supported by a very capable team you know, ready to serve our commercial clients, our corporate clients. And let me just say um, right now, before I get any further into my conversation with you, that we are here to do business. That's what we're here for. We're here to serve and we're here to do business. And one of the first things that we've done in the last couple of months is we looked into our corporate unit and we said, uh-uh, the structure of that unit is not what we want. Because our vision is to be able to serve our customers on a very personal level. It's done on the retail side. And I know that the commercial customers and our corporate customers, you are clamoring for that. So that is what we have begun putting in place. We've begun removing all the admin from the relationship managers and so, and our people will be out there serving you and meeting you. 
I have introduced the Republic team. I want to say a special welcome to my banking colleagues. I feel really supported with so many of you here in the room. Jonathan and team, thanks for supporting me. Omar, I like that. <laughs> Omari, Carol, thank you very much for coming out and supporting us. Family, there are plenty of business to share. We can't take all. I mean, if I, if I tried to eat all the food, what would I look like? Come on, you know? So thank you, thank you very, very much. But we're here to talk about Republic, serious matters of banking. I'm going to tell you a little bit about RFHL, Republic Financial Holdings Limited. In the months since we've opened our doors to Republic EC, you know, we have been getting to know our customers, our staff, and our communities, and they have been getting to know us. But we thought it necessary to tell you the story of who we are and what we are. So let me start with our origins on Independence Square in Trinidad 182 years ago. Or maybe I should tell you that we used the 182 years to build a solid reputation as a bank with high, high standards for integrity and delivering results with excellent service. A bank that contributes not only a strong balance sheet, I'll call that number just now, but strong societies as well. These are all important chapters of our story and all fundamental to who we are. But if I was to zero in on exactly what unites and defines us as republic, wherever you find us, wherever we go. I would have to say to you that above all, our story is a Caribbean story. Written right here in our region by our people over the course of nearly two centuries, as we work together over that time to chart our own way forward. For us, that focus on charting our own way forward has made all the difference for what we do and how we do it. RFHL is a solid organization with a long history in the Caribbean region and a demonstrated commitment to regional development and success. We are distinguished, and I'm very proud to say that, we are distinguished by our ability to add value to the markets we enter through a developmental approach that ensures strong local input strong local knowledge, strong local influence, and authority in decision making. When we make decisions, they happen here. They ain't jumping on a Liat flight to go Trinidad, or on an Air Canada flight to go Canada. They, the decisions are made here. They are made here through our chain, starting with the locals in our branches. Why? Because they know you. I cannot think that I can come into St. Lucia or in the EC in three months and know you. I can't. I have to depend on my local colleagues to understand how you like to do business, how you have done business in the past, and how you intend to do business moving forward. So one of the First, first things that we did, I remember clearly, when I was handed my appointment letter, I also received what is called our duties and authorities. I walked out of our president's office. I went to the airport because I was coming here. I sat on that hour flight, and 
I delegated. I wrote next to my authorities. This for Sean, that for Fidella, that for Janelle, that for who? I came, I gave it to my secretary, I said distribute this. I said to Sean, for credit, for loans, send that down the chain. We have experienced bankers, we trust them. My role is not to sit waiting for credit proposals to come to me. I leave that to my experienced bankers because they know you and they are highly skilled professional bankers. Yesterday, I was at a, at a, a customer event in Viewfort, and one of our customers there stood up without being asked, and you know, I come from a marketing and communications background, so I could ask people to say things, but this was not at all encouraged. But this customer stood up and gave a testimonial. November the 1st was a Friday. We changed, we went from red to blue. And then the Tuesday of the following week, he got a call from Sean and they spoke some business. And then Sean asked him to send some stuff to him. And then the Friday, he got approval. That is the kind of turnaround because they need to come to me. They need to go on a Liat flight to Trinidad. You know, we don't have to go reach, right? We don't have to reach the same day if it's on the Liat flight. So, you know, the decision was made here. And that is what you're going to get from us. That is what we believe in. We believe in strong local input, strong local knowledge, strong local influence, and authority in decision making. Our aim at all times is to create stronger economies in territories, increase business opportunities for clients across the region, wherever we are, enriched career advancement opportunities for our resources, not only here, but across all of the Republic uh, territories, and stronger and more resilient societies overall. Let me say that in the Caribbean region, our history will show that impact is not just limited to the territories that we serve directly. We have in the past, even before coming into the EC, we have supported major economic development projects within the EC without an underground presence, including financing support for expansion of the St. John port in Antigua, when they liked us, and the Carifesta village housing development in St. Kitts, and let's not forget the construction of the Darren Sami National Stadium right here in St. Lucia. We didn't have a presence. We didn't know if we were coming to St. Lucia or going into Antigua or into St. Kitts Nevis, but we saw that there was a need. You know, those, those territories came to us as a large financial institution, and we helped. We weren't afraid even though we did not have a presence on the ground. So you can imagine, without a presence on the ground, we were supporting. Can you imagine what we will do when we have a presence on the ground? So we are here to support, and since 1992, you know, we've been on this growth path. It started with our first acquisition, acquisition in Grenada. And since then, we have been purposefully seeking out opportunities in Caribbean countries where there is evidence that our unique approach to financial services can make a substantial difference. Seeking out opportunities right here in our region is a testament to our confidence and our commitment to the Caribbean. It's rooted in a very simple understanding. The Caribbean is our home. That's what it's rooted in. We are a Caribbean bank, indigenous Caribbean bank, and one that is interested 
in the development of our region. And we feel that we are stronger when we work together. So we have a vested interest in seeing economies, businesses, and people of this region grow and thrive. For us, taking care of home, if I could kind of bring it down a little bit, bring it in. Taking care of home means serving our customers with a type of excellence that empowers individuals, families, and businesses to achieve their full potential. It also extends beyond our customers and into our communities through our social responsibility initiative, the Power to Make a Difference program, which in the last 15 years saw us invest in over 43 million US dollars in social programs in communities that we serve. That's coming to the EC. That's what we've been doing for 182 years and we have no plans to change that. We believe that is, you know, this genuine interest in our region that defines both our approach to doing business and the results that we have been able to deliver to the countries in which we operate. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. When entering a country, what do we bring? We come to the table with a wealth of experience, 182 years in retail and commercial banking, 150 years in corporate banking, more than 30 years in merchant banking, and almost 20 years in special project funding, to be specific. We've earned that experience right here in the Caribbean. And in that time, we've learned a couple of things as well. We've learned how to and the importance of listening to our business communities and responding to their needs. And because of that, we have developed a unique appreciation for the kind of support that is needed to help businesses grow and thrive in this region and beyond. Frankly, we every day work towards maintaining the position of being the best at corporate and commercial banking in this region. As the Republic Group has grown across the region, we have relied on that knowledge and experience to build a track record for success and adding value to our markets. Whether it's through enhancing the range of products and services offered to customers, making significant investments in infrastructural development, improving policies and procedures and our governance structures, or even using our linkages across the group to put business leaders across the region and into Africa. I think we, both Gordon and myself, omitted to, to say to the room that we also have a presence in Ghana, Africa. So we encourage our territories always to be in conversations with each other to create opportunities. Just a few months ago in Ghana, Africa, we held our second successful Caribbean Ghana trade mission. That was in Ghana. The first was hosted in Port of Spain in 2018. We also have hosted inter-Caribbean uh, trade missions. In 2016, we had a mission in Guyana, and that is still bearing fruit for our customers because they were able to find alignments and connections at these trade missions and expand their opportunities, yeah? So my colleagues in Trinidad, that is not usually driven by the home territory. The trade missions are usually driven from head office, and my colleagues from Trinidad have already told me that the trade missions for EC is in the making, so look out for that. These trade missions have been extremely successful, you know, to allow you to 
explore different markets, understand different ways of doing business, and learn from each other how to meet shared challenges. And that's just one example of how we use our position as a group to strengthen the businesses we serve. As we have worked with our customers to help them grow, help you grow, and achieve your goals, we've kind of grown as well. We've become stronger. And each and every Republic subsidiary has seen an increase in profitability and total assets after joining the Republic Group. And overall, resulting from that, the group has built a strong balance sheet reflected in a strong financial performance. As at December 2019, 31st, our assets, the group assets, stood at 15.24 billion US dollars, helped thanks to 1.9 billion from EC, because we joined in November. So in December, our assets would have been counted there. And some from Cayman too, 1.75 billion from Cayman National. Our net profit after tax is also projected to increase from over 224 million US dollars um, that we uh, earned in, as at September 2019, our financial year end, to almost 265 million US dollars, considering what Arbeck intends to contribute. No pressure, team, no pressure. <laughs> you know, um, when we're talking about banks, there are two kind of metrics that customers like to feel comfortable about. Uh, one is capital adequacy. You know, the regulators like to talk about that as well. Um, and let me say that within the Republic Group, we look at the Basel II requirement, not one, two. And we are above the 10%. In sub -sub some subsidiaries, we are about 20-something percent, you know, and some within the teens. For us here at our back, we are at 13.59%. Minimum of 10, and using Basel 1, which is still the metric used within the um, ECCB, by the ECCB in the, in the Eastern Caribbean um, region, with a minimum of 8, when you use that measurement, we are at 20.3%. What does that mean? We're strong and we're solid. We're adequately capitalized. Beyond our balance sheet, we also enjoy a strong correspondent banking relationships. And I know. They had, you know, when, we, when the news was first announced in November of 2018, you know, there were some concerns about losing um, a global uh, bank like Scotiabank and, and, and correspondent banking relationships. And so at Republic, we have no concern about our correspondent banking relationships. They are strong. And we use, we leverage the strength of our group to build our correspondent banking relationship. So the chance of that being shaken, we think is very, very slim. And as I'm on that capital adequacy, as well as correspondent bankers, let me just say for the types of deals, the types of transactions that we are interested in playing with um, in the EC, all types. Big, small, complex, medium. Why? Because we are not dependent only on the balance sheet of Republic Bank EC to support our aspirations, but that we have the power of the Republic Group standing behind us. What may not be obvious to the observer's eye is exactly how we have been able to achieve those results with such consistency over time. Don't worry, colleagues, I'm not going to sell out all the state secrets here. <laughs> but I will say that it goes back to what I mentioned earlier about our Caribbean focus 
and our steadfast commitment to taking care of home. And home in this instance means our people. We, our success, we believe, is driven by our people, our customers, our employees, our communities, and our interests in providing them with opportunities to thrive. So I mentioned about the Power to Make a Difference program, which is 16 years old. And over the last 16 years, across all of our territories, we have formed connections with national communities with the aim of safeguarding the welfare and ensuring the sustainable success of our beautiful nations. When I received, so I told you about my duties and authorities, right? Well, I also got my goals, you know, because we don't make joke with that. Look at targets, Michelle, go, go make them. And on that, very high level, very, very high level, you know, some business do this, do that, implement power to make a difference within the first year, because that's important to us at Republic. We believe we are an organization that a lot has been given to us, and therefore, we must give back a lot. So look out, we have already begun, you know, we've already begun talking within on the EC territory. You know, this is a kind of difficult one when you're in, 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 a, in a standalone country and you have a budget of X, to put towards your CSR program, well, no, you're, you're spending it there. But here in the EC, I have a budget of Y, and I have to spread it six. Yeah, so I can't put everything into St. Lucia and leave St. Kitts kind of hanging there or say Anguilla, well taken care of, forget them up in the corner up there. I can't do that. So it's taking us longer than we expected because we are trying to find regional projects that create impact that create impact, and that brings sustainability. But in the meantime, we have begun ramping up our internal program, which is focused on volunteerism, and brings us closer to our communities. And this is where our, our staff members, they get involved. So we are ramping up on that, and you're going to be hearing about that a lot more um, in the upcoming next couple of months. As I mentioned, in the last 16 years, the group, we have invested over 43 million US dollars in CSR, and yeah, that means we give away 43 million dollars to help build communities. That's what it means. We gave it away without expecting, you know, it's not a loan. We didn't ask people to pay it back. You come to us, you sell us a project, we see that it will bring, um, you know, benefit to the community, and we say, yeah, 43 million US dollars in giveaway, you know. My um, previous CFO in Trinidad, he's not a CFO anymore. He's doing another job now. Um, but he, was, he used to say that to me all the time uh, because CSR fell under my responsibility. Michelle, you're giving away the bank money. I said, mm hmm, mm hmm, I am. But look at what it's bringing to us. Look at what it's doing for our communities. Look at all the good that it's doing for our communities. So we have, over the last 16 years, we've engaged over a thousand charities and impacted over a million lives region-wide. When we launch the program here in the EC, we know what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on youth development, entrepreneurship, and environmental sustainability. Important for us in the hurricane belt, very important. And that's where our focus is going to be, as well as our volunteerism, as I mentioned. So in addition to investing in our communities, we have a strong tradition of investing in our people. Continuous training, supporting them to achieve their full potential, whether it's in the bank or out of the bank. Because, you know, we have a, we have a view that when you encourage your staff members to develop themselves and you support them, you're going to benefit anyway, even though they don't stay with you for the rest of their lives. I'm an anomaly joining at two and still here 37 years later. You know, this, all of this development and so translates into superior service for our customers. Furthermore, we firmly believe in the abilities and leadership potential of our Caribbean people. We are looking outside. We have it right here in the Caribbean. 
we traditionally place high emphasis on local knowledge, as I mentioned, for allowing leadership and decision-making skills to grow. So what should you expect to see? Kind of sold the Republic story, yeah? And you, what is she talking about? I haven't seen it here yet. So what should you expect to see? I already mentioned a lot more local involvement. We started with all of Scotia's staff members transitioning to Republic. All. Yeah? Why? Who are I going to get to run the bank if I didn't take Scotia staff? And they were running a profitable and good organization all along. What make me feel that I know better than them? Not at all. So local input. They knew. They knew the customers. We kept them. Same smile every day. You have already begun and will continue to feel the changes of local decision making, flexibility, quick turnaround. You're going to feel that. Understanding deals that non-Caribbean people may not understand. You're going to continue to feel that. And to support that, as I mentioned, we have Gordon. I said he was a Caribbean man. He's from Dominica. He's lived and worked in the Caribbean for his entire career. He's no stranger to St. Lucia. In fact, um, in the 15 years he stayed, uh, he worked with Scotia, he was head of compliance for the region, and of course he traveled throughout the EC. Gordon is very familiar with the region and well equipped, very well equipped to serve you. For me, he's already an invaluable source of support. And thanks to people like Gordon and Fidela and Bruno and many of the other key resources across our back, you can expect us to be a lot more responsive to your needs. We feel comforted that we have put the decision-making power into the hands of people who can make decisions in difficult situations. People who can see the value of your projects because they understand the lay of the land and they know you. We all know that in this business, you know, in business time is money. So when the decision to approve a loan or extend an overdraft must travel over waters and even land masses, the business community ends up being constrained unnecessarily. And that in turn hurts your ability to drive growth and make positive contributions. And we don't want to stop that. We want you to be able to grow and make your contributions. We do not believe in the one size fit all approach to service or to leadership. And we never could have built the results that I mentioned earlier if it was one size fit all. You will not get that at the EC. Our early feedback in St. Lucia and the EC has been Yes, our customers are beginning to feel the difference. We've received very, very positive feedback about what is described by customers as the magic that occurred on the night of the 31st of October when the red came down and the blue went up, you know? And we appreciate all the positive se sentiments. Um, thank you very much. But I want to be very transparent and I want to say to you that we are still transitioning from Scotiabank. And I can see the words wires, wire transfers in persons' minds. And I want to say that we acknowledge that that was one of the areas that gave some difficulty at the beginning. And it, is, it was a transition, it was a transition issue that we have worked out and continue to work on. But when I speak about transparency, what I am actually speaking of is the fact that we are still operating on Scotiabank's technology platform. You know, we could take down the sign in red and put up a blue sign overnight, but banking is kind of built on technology these days. So there's no way that we could have switched from one technology platform to the next overnight. 
So we were able to negotiate, thankfully, I um, want to thank Scotia publicly for that. Uh, we were able to negotiate with Scotia Bank, and we, con we will continue to use their platform. We started in November at 18 months for the next 18 months, so now we're down to 15 months, yeah? And work has already begun for us to make that transition over to the Republic systems. This won't be for too much longer, you know, 15 months. Um, holding them to that, or holding them to that. Um, and, you know, when our platforms are put in place, you would see more magic happening. Yeah? The magic of the Republic platforms, putting our experience in managing big projects and our sophisticated credit and financing facilities to work for you. So that's about Republic. What about St. Lucia? In the time that we've opened our doors here in St. Lucia, we've met, we've spoken with many of you. And I want to thank you for your time, those of you that we've met with, and all of your valuable input. These conversations have given us some good insights into where our support is most needed. We like to think we are a listening bank, and we value the opportunity to hear your needs and concerns, and we are very enthusiastic about partnering with the business community. What are we interested in supporting? Big, small, medium, everything, complex, easy. But in addition to the mainstay of banking, retail products, services like mortgages and personal loans, we plan to put a good deal of focus on progressive areas like real estate development, property acquisition, working capital, bonds and trade finance facilities. We've been told that there is a need to open these avenues to the business communities here in St. Lucia and to the other EC countries and we are here to support. There's also been a groundswell of requests for us to reintroduce bridging loans or construction loans. We've listened, we've heard you, it's coming. We are giving all of these, atten all of these areas our full attention as well as putting focus towards supporting industries that has been fueling the growth that makes St. Lucia a leading economy in the ECCU. From my eyes looking in, this is a country of boundless opportunities. I already mentioned my admiration for the beauty, <coughs> but I see the beauty being far more than, you know, just skin deep. The time that I've been here, it's clear to me that our solutions are industrious, <laughs> creative, and talented people. I'm a Lucian, proud to be. And you know, you would think that <coughs> it would be a feat <clears throat> for a small island of 160,000 people To have even one Nobel winner, <clears throat> but you have two, Mr. Derek Walcott and Sir Arthur Lewis. <clears throat> and that to me shines as an example of the potential that St. Lucia holds, and it stands true to what I have experienced thus far. I have a great deal of admiration for the strong entrepreneurial spirit that I have observed. And I wanna, I wanna congratulate you that you have managed to cultivate that spirit, especially among our young people. Of course, I'm thoroughly impressed by the way our young entrepreneurs are redefining our carnival experience, Thaddeus. Not only by repositioning it, on the world stage as one of the must-do carnivals of the region, but simply by understanding that beneath 
all the creativity and cultural value, Carnival is a business. And the Carnival band leaders in St. Lucia, they found ways to make it more profitable and therefore sustainable. And that's something that many other Caribbean islands are trying to accomplish. And being a Trini, I know it's harder than it looks. It's also inspiring to see so many of our entrepreneurs applying their minds and their skill to bring in about positive social change. I want to recognize the Rural Women's Network as one example of this. Their progress in empowering women to create their own forms of employment while furthering St. Lucia's development, for me, is nothing short of exceptional. This spirit of empowering people within our communities to play an active role in promoting sustainable develop development whilst achieving full potential is something that resonates very, very deeply with us as a bank. And we are committed to supporting that. We are very much inclined to working with entrepreneurs and SMEs to keep that spirit alive and thriving in St. Lucia and across the EC. Another area, of course, which has come up in our conversation is tourism, an important business as an industry here. And others have shied away from tourism, but not you. And your numbers show it. I think I read in 2019, you had a record break. Oh, we, 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 we had a record break in here. <laughs> With a 7%, I was here. So I, you know, I, I was part of it. 7% uh, increase in long stay arrivals and that you, we are celebrating our 11th World Travel Award in a row for being the world leading honeymoon destination. That's not, it's not a small accomplishment by any measure. But what really stands out to me about the Lucian way of doing business is that you have been able to find your niche and to be successful at it. Not only being successful at your niche, but taking the right steps to sustain your momentum. You are already and always looking at the next level. No rest for the weary in St. Lucia. We want to support the development of luxury hotels, upgrades to roads, port facilities, marinas, airports, horse racing, and other infrastructural projects. To this end, as I mentioned, we are open to all discussions. All discussions we are open to that might support development. We have already been speaking with Invest St. Lucia on possible partnerships for key projects. <coughs> but we are also open to bold financing opportunities as well as private-public partnerships. And as I mentioned, um, the, the financing op opportunities that we supported in Antigua and St. Kitts and right here, they were all good PPPs. So we are, we are also open to that. It's something that we know and something that we want to continue supporting. We are also mindful that whilst tourism is a profitable product, it's also an elastic product. We've seen what natural disasters have done to our neighbors in the Bahamas and Dominica. Just to name a, a few. We know that when it comes to tourism, if you cannot recover from a natural disaster quickly to meet demand, the demand will find somewhere else to go. And whilst in St. Lucia, like Trini, you know, we say God is a Trini. We so far south, we sheltered, hurricanes don't come down there, it's reach on the tip and swerve and all that. And we feel that way in, in St. Lucia a little bit as well. You know, that we, we do have some benefits to our, our, natural, out, um, our natural environment that you know, we, we're not as bad as the others, but here's what. Tourists see the Caribbean as a whole. 
They don't, when they go in, when they decide, I go in on a Caribbean vacation, it don't start with I go into St. Lucia necessarily. It starts with I go in in the Caribbean. And then they start to look. So when there is trouble in the Caribbean from a natural disaster perspective, everyone can be affected. So, you know, we are not only talking about how do we land in tourism, but we are also very interested in supporting it with an eye towards building resilience and longevity. We are, we are very open to partnering with you, our business partners, the business community, not only to take advantage of the opportunities, but to enhance your ability to withstand and to quickly recover from the shocks that may come from any interruptions to that industry. So I'm wrapping up now, and I'm sure that you have taken from all that I have said that I like St. Lucia, nice people, love a good time, could lime, like music, soca, could dance. I feel right at home. But that's a good thing, you know, working and building within the Caribbean. Yes, there are differences. Our accents are different. Some of us look different. But we have enough in common, I feel, to make wherever you go feel like home. And I am looking forward to building on those commonalities and strengths to deliver on the potential that I see here in St. Lucia and the wider Eastern Caribbean. So coming from Trini, I'm looking forward to carnival. I'm the luckiest girl in the world. I'm getting two carnivals in 2020. I head in Trinidad next Wednesday, have a good time, and then I wait until July and have a Second good time, luckiest girl in the world. I have also been a frequent visitor to St. Lucia Jazz in the past, and I'm glad to be here again, because I will be attending my house full already. Everybody come in St. Lucia once again for jazz. And I have been told that some of your other summer festivals are also, I should also experience. So I think I'm gonna have a good time in St. Lucia. I think we chose well. And I haven't even spoken about CPL, cricket. I mean, I'm a true cricket lover. I like all kind of cricket. Tess, win ball, one day, and the sexy T20. But I think a lot of you would know that Republic Bank, we are a major supporter of CPL. You know, we have a lot of good fun during that tournament. And I'm so looking forward to doing that even on a grander scale here in the EC, in St. Lucia and St. Kitts. I have to, you know, I have to expand my wardrobe now. It's not only red, white, and black. Now I have to put in some green and thing. I have to put in some for St. Kitts. And I have to put in some blue and black and yellow for St. Lucia. I don't know what I'll do when we play in each other. I think I'll just look like a carnival costume because I support everybody, right? I'm no longer just supporting Trini, I have to support everyone. So where, whoever I'm supporting and wherever we are playing, you know, I'll be there cheering our teams on. From what I've said, I hope that you have heard some plans, you've heard enough about us that makes you a little more comfortable. I've given you information probably that you did not have before. Um, we know that there, are, there is quite a lot of work to be done, but we also feel that there's quite a lot to look forward to. I am very, very grateful, my team and I, we are grateful for the support of the business community thus far and the chamber. Um, thank you very much. The, this invitation, you know, I think is a good start. It's a good start to building a good partnership. Thank you very much. I thank you for having me. And I look forward to working with you in the years to come. Remember, I'm 39, so I have plenty of years to retirement, right? Uh, wrong for a long time. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. If they're too hard, I'll pass them on to the team. Questions? Yes, Mr. Lewis. I'm very curious. Uh, 
Um, what took you so long? No. <laughs> you came in late. <laughs> um, what took me so long? Well, um, under considering, it's, this is an acquisition, but then did Republic Bank ever try to come into some... Ah, from that perspective, yes. from that perspective. Very good question. Yes, um, I will answer that this way. We have always had an interest in this region, always. But you know, for acquisitions or for entering a new market, it's always how do you enter? Do you start from scratch, rent a building and get a license and start a bank? Do you acquire? What do you do? So we've always been on the lookout. Um, we went into Grenada in 1992. So we always had an interest in the EC. An opportunity became available to us in Grenada, and then in Guyana, and then in, in, in Barbados and Suriname. And this opportunity, this opportunity, the stars aligned. Our predecessor signaled their interest to leave the Caribbean, to leave our region, and as a Caribbean bank, we said, well, we like it here. This is our home. We stay in here. That's what took us so long, the right opportunity. Yeah? Any other questions? Aha, hello. From Choice Media. Good question. So you'd remember I mentioned um, something about capital adequacy and strong balance sheets and stuff. So uh, the Caribbean is a small region, yeah? And um, we were, we are, um, we have a very strong balance sheet, um, very strong capital adequacy position, money to invest, not enough people to lend it to, not enough big projects. So we say, well, well we gotta buy some banks. We have to expand. And there was nothing attractive in this region at the time. No opportunity, as I mentioned. And we started to look further. Well, there's no secret about Trinidad and Tobago and the foreign exchange situation, right? So at first, we started to look at US type of earning opportunities. And we said, uh uh, we don't want to fight up with them fellas in President Trump land. Well, it wasn't him at the time, but anyway, we didn't want to fight up there. Uh, we looked into Europe and we say, uh-uh, we're not interested in that. And we looked into Africa and we said, you know, there are, Africa was the fastest growing um, continent at the time, yeah? And we said, they're looking kind of attractive. And you know what? They speak English. And they were colonized by the British, like us. So their laws would be very similar. I think we could kind of go down there. Not in the difficult ones, not in the ones with wars, morning, noon, and night, but the ones with stable governments and that type of thing. And Ghana was our first opportunity. Yeah. So Ghana is not the end of our Africa story. It was the start. Question, you're letting me off the hook? Are happy? Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> what kind of the IT transition which we're in a digital world, I appreciate that. Um, but what about other aspects, for example, your credit card facilities and so on? What's the, the plan for transitioning from social to It's it's within that full transition. Um, I'll just give a little more insight. So, you know, when we were you know, um taking that red down and it blew up overnight. It's not an easy thing, it's plenty planning, right? So lots of conversations. And at the time, my responsibility, I was the head of marketing and communication for the group. So when we started to talk, of course, the brand is mine. You know, I'm very, very, I guard that brand very jealously and that type of thing. And they started to say, well, Michelle, you know, um, what about if we leave some for, well, they started with the technology. So we said, yeah, but we can't do anything about that. 
You know, what about the forms in the branches? Can we just leave them Scotia until we run out? I say, no. We, we are not Scotia, we are Republic. Change them. Oh, but it costs, uh-uh, change them. And we started going down. And then they say, and what about the plastic girl? You can't change them plastic too? I say, oh God, well, no, I can't. Because long ago, in credit card world, it was just my magnetic stripe, right? And you could have changed that out wish wash. But today with chip and all sorts of stuff, you can't. So let me tell you, I had to swallow hard and think long and swallow hard again and say, okay, I'll let my customers carry that Scotia card in their pockets and their wallets for a little while longer. We are going to begin changing the plastics out in a couple months, but it's still being run on the Scotia system. The full transition of all technology will happen in 15 months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can't, I, can't, I cannot in good conscience put my staff and my customers through too many ups and downs. Change credit card, settle it, change banking, uh-uh has to be change, but the plastics we will change in a couple of years. Yeah? I would stop feeling so bad every time I would fall see these red cards staring up at me. <laughs>